Okay. The four attributes, current, voltage, resistance, power. Current, how much is flowing through? When I have firefighters in the group, I tell them, current is gallons per minute. Okay? Voltage is the 200 PSI on the, on the uh, hose. Resistance, that's that nozzle you put on the end to shape the flow that slows things down. And power, that's what you do to the guy that you hit with the, with the stream. Okay? The more power you have, the, it's a combination of the pressure and the, and the amount of water that how bad he goes back when you hit him with it. Okay? Of course, firefighters never do that to each other. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Interesting thing. You would think that current would have a symbol of C or A. It doesn't. It's I in the formulas. Voltage is E. It's measured in volts, however. And E is electromotive force, and we will see that term in here at other places. Resistance is in ohms. We mentioned impedance before. Resistance and impedance have a common thread. They both impede the flow of electricity. Impedance is usually used with alternating current. Resistance is used with DC. <coughs> Pretty much, there's a lot of similarities. For the purposes of what we're going to discuss, an ohm of impedance and an ohm of resistance has somewhat the same effect. But we're going to be talking about resistance, which is DC. Power is in watts. The symbol is P. That's the one that makes sense. Okay? That chart you sort of want to get committed to memory. Okay? Current amps, symbol I. Voltage volts, symbol E. Resistance ohms, symbol R, power watts, symbol P. Believe it or not, this is not the most complicated section of this. This is easy. There are two triangles there. My suggestion is you copy those and you memorize them. And I'll explain them to you as we go. Okay. Somebody tell me, what is E? If I'm working volts. with E is volts, good. What's P? Watts. Watts. I? One, somebody else, he's doing real well. Current. And what is it measured in? Amps. R? Ohms. Resistance, okay. Well, let me show you something. Cover the E mentally. If I say I want the volts, I cover the E, I have I times R. If I want the number of volts, if I have 1 amp at 10 ohms, 1 times 10 is 10 volts. If I cover the R, I have E divided by I. If I have an E of 100 and an I of 10, and divide 10 into 100, I have a resistance of 10. Take the other side, power. I have a voltage of 110 volts. I have a current of 11 amps. I take 11 times 110, and that's 1,210 watts. Whatever you cover, look at the remaining formula. This is the other thing that I suggest that you draw on the back of the piece of paper, because when you get to these, you're going to second guess yourself instead. 
By the way, work with these for a little while. You won't need that. E is equal to I times R. R is equal to E divided by I. I is equal to E divided by R. P is I, I times E. I is equal to P divided by E. E is equal to P divided by I. How are these important? They are important because they are relationships when you're working with electricity. I'll give you an example. You have a 1200 watt heater. You know those little ones that you get around the house? They're 1200 watts. How many amps is that thing going to draw? Do you know? It isn't marked on the heater in most cases. But if you take 1200 as the power, you take 120 as the voltage, and you divide 120 into 1,200, what do you get? 10. 10. So we're going to get 10 amps. That power strip has a 10 amp, typically, circuit breaker in it. If you plug that heater into that power strip, it will work, almost for sure. But if you plug a 100 watt light bulb in with it, guess what happens? Click. Okay? Some practical stuff in this, isn't there? Okay. My boss at work did that one time. He plugged a 1200 watt heater into a power strip with his PC. The average PC burned at that time burned close to 200 watts. Two more amps. 12 amps? Mm -hmm. Okay. Electrical current is measured in which of the following units? Current is amps. amps. What's the symbol? I. Okay. And believe me, I have a method to wanting you to, guys to say this. Because if you say it, would you believe that the most credible voice in the world is your own? Okay. Electrical power is measured in which of the following units? Watts. Okay. What symbol? P. P. Okay. I don't care if you look at your chart to, to get it. The more you do that, the more likely there is by the time we're done with this, you will know it. That's my objective. What is the name for the flow of electrons in electric circuits? Remember gallons per hour? It's flow. Not pressure. Current, which is I. Amps. What is the name for the current that flows in only in one direction? Direct current DC, okay? By the way, what's the name for the current that flows back and forth? What? Alternating. Alternating current or AC, yep. What is the electrical term for electromotive force that causes electron flow? Remember I said E voltage is electromotive force? It's voltage. EMF, that's one of the, yeah, I don't know why we couldn't use one term, but boy, we just got to do it. Now, this question, everybody ought to know the answer to. What voltage does a mobile transceiver typically require? 12 volts, volts because of a battery. It's because of the car battery. It's designed to run off of a car battery. Okay. Which of the following is a good electrical conductor? Copper. The only one on there that is even, vaguely. Which one of the following is a good electrical insulator? The only one that is. I have a friend who has a glass jar that when a thunderstorm occurs, he takes the coax off the back of his transmitter and puts it in a glass jar. Don't know if that's going to do any good or not, but, but he thinks it does. I, what is the name for a current that reverses direction on a regular basis? Well, alternating current AC. Yep. What term describes the rate at which electrical energy is used? This is one that we didn't cover the concept, but it's power. Energy is power. 
I don't care where you get 100 watts, whether it's 100 watts in heat equivalent, 100 watts in mechanical, 100 watts in electrical, it will do the same amount of work. Okay? Now, you've got to transfer it efficiently, but if you can transfer it efficiently, likewise, if you have 100 watts of heat or 100 watts of mechanical energy and you convert it to heat, you will get 100 watts of heat. Sometime you want to have some fun, take an object that weighs, I think it's 100,000 pounds at 100 miles above the earth, doing 25,000 miles an hour, and figure out how much heat's generated for to get it to stop at earth. And then you know why the space shuttle would burn up if it What is the unit of electromotive force? It's the volt. EMF is voltage, symbol E. What describes the number of times a second that alternating current makes a complete cycle? It is frequency. There is no difference between alternating current and RF, radio frequency, except one, the frequency. Typically, alternating current refers to something around 60 cycles, 60 hertz. RF refers to something above, usually above uh, 100 kilohertz. Although there are radios that operate below that, would you believe? In which type of circuit is current the same through all of the components? A series circuit. I need to a drawing on this and I don't have one. A series circuit is where you come off the battery, you go through this component, through this component, through this one, through this one, through this one, and back. The current is the same going through because it has to go through each one. Go back to my old fire hose thing. If you got water going in one end and coming out the other end, no matter how many pieces of hose you've got, the flow is the same the whole way down. What type of circuit, in what type of circuit is the voltage the same across all components? A parallel. This is where you hook one component to the battery, another to the battery, another to the battery. The voltage is the same, but the amount of current going through each one of them either can or cannot be different. Each one of them sees the same voltage. You have 10 lights in the car that are connected to a 12 volt battery. All of them are seeing 12 volts. How many cars have 10 lights anymore? Only 10. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed when I look at that. T5B. Oh, shit. This is the section that I will tell you I have the most trouble with. It is called Kilo Mega Giga. An item is one. If you have a kilo of any item or a kilo of any item, be it, be it Hertz or cocaine, <coughs> a kilo is a thousand, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was bad, but I gotta remember that one, all right? If you have a million of them, that's a mega. So one million is one mega. Six million is six mega. What is one mega in kilo? In other words, if I have one megahertz, what is it in kilohertz? 100 kilohertz? 1,000. Oh, yeah, right. OK, good. I'd rather somebody try it and get it wrong because then we, we clear up the, okay? Gigahertz. If you have one gigahertz, you have a thousand megahertz, and you have a, yeah, and you have a million kilohertz, and as some one of my friends says, that's painful. Okay. We go the other way. One of the things that we hit with radio, 
electronics is we go from the massive numbers to the tiny numbers. Okay? It's one of the it's one of the <coughs> largest ranges of any discipline I've worked with. I mean, on the, on firearms, if you even if you include a uh, military uh, cannon, a rifle, you go from what about 1.7 or 0.17 caliber somewhere down around there to 16, 20 inches. I think the old the Japs had one that was 19.1. But that's not a big range. Here we're going from one million million to a billion, to a billion, okay? We play a range, and it's just there. Milla is one thousandth. One milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. And we work with milliamps. Micro is one million. Typically we use with micro with, with capacitors. Nano is usually used with capacitors and pico is used with capacitors. And capacitors are a component we're going to talk about a little bit. I can go out and buy a capacitor that has one picofarad, it's called. The unit is farad. And I can buy a capacitor that is four farads. That is a four billion to one ratio. The one picofarad is going to be real small. The four farad one is about that big. They get an awful lot in a small box. That's a, that's a concept. If you've got that down, this is easy from here on in. Okay, no, seriously. Because all we're going to be doing for the next few, ch few questions is changing unit. If you have 1.5 amps, how many milliamps do you have? 1,500. One kilovolt is 1,000 volts. One megahertz can either be 1,000 kilohertz or a million hertz. A gig, 1,000 megahertz, a million kilohertz, or a billion hertz. I choose to play with the number of zeros, okay? That works for me. We don't have millimeters, but that's the best example. One millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. One microfarad is one millionth of a farad. That's what a millionth looks like. It's also a million picofarads. That sets right in the middle of the range. One amp is a thousand milliamps. Now we get into some questions. See how we do. How many milliampers in 1.5 amps? One. Is that clear to people? Okay, because if it's clear, we're doing okay. If it's not, we got problems. What is another way to specify a radio signal frequency of 1,500,000 hertz? Okay, you got a couple choices there. It could be 1.5 megahertz, but that isn't there. It also could be 1,500 kilohertz, which is. It's a, okay, comfortable with that one. Because as we clear one or two of these, the rest of them will start to make more sense. How many volts are in one kilovolt? 1,000. How many volts equal one microvolt? Now, see, a microvolt is a millionth of a volt. Micro is millionth. By the way, the average radio receiver has a sensitivity around one microvolt. One millionth of a volt is the signal coming in. 
that it needs to work. That it just it blows my mind when I when I play with some of these numbers. Which of the following is equal to 500 milliwatts? Okay, a milliwatt is uh, what a thousandth of a watt. So if you have a th if you have 500 thousandths, what do you have? 0.5, half a watt. Okay. If an ammeter calibrated in amps is used to measure a 3,000 milliampere circuit, what reading would, would show? Well, 3,000 milliampers is how many amps? Three. If a frequency display calibrated in megahertz shows a reading of 3.525 megahertz, what would it show if it were calibrated in kilohertz? Okay, you're going to move from the 3.5 megahertz to kilohertz, you're going to drop some decimal points. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be 3,500. Sci sanity check on this always is, if you're going to a, to a smaller unit, the number is bigger. Okay. If I go from megahertz to kilohertz, I ought to be looking at a bigger number. Good sanity check. Because if you make a mistake, that's the first thing that's likely to catch it. How many microfarads are in one million picofarads? Where's it at? We have a microfarad here at one million. And we have a pike with pica at a million millionth. So, there we go. I need to shove that slide. In. We have a million. Uh, we have a million pike of ferrets, and a pike of ferret is a millionth of a microfarad. So it's one microfarad. It's shifting. Now. We're going to hit one other electrical item. I got to think about where we're going to get out of here in the next couple of minutes. 3 dB. There's something called decibels. And this is kind of conceptual. Decibels are not a level like voltage, 1,000 volts, 100 volts. Decibels are a change. You can either increase the signal or you can decrease it. If you double the power, you go from 5 watts to 10 watts, the guy on the other end sees 3 dB change. If you quadruple the power, he sees 6. Likewise, if you quarter the power, he sees 6 then. The real neat ones that you want to remember are 3, 6, 3, 3, 6, and 10. 10 is the magic number. If you lose 10 dB, you have one tenth the power. If you increase 10 dB, it's 10 times the power. I'll give me a couple examples. I have a 5 watt transmitter and it's not quite getting through. If I increase power to 10 watts, that's 3 dB. See if it if it's close, it'll take it over. Okay. Now, one of the places that things go wrong is if I lose that power somewhere, and there are ways to lose it. We're going to talk about these. This is kind of a foundation for what we're going to get into in some of the other stuff. 3 dB plus is double the power. No matter what power you're at, if you're at 10, it's 20. If you're at 5,000 and you double it and you go up 3 dB, it's 10,000. Likewise, going down, it's halving. 6 is, do, is quartering. 10 is 1 tenth or 10 times. You have to know whether you're going up or down. Increase, decrease. What is the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 3, from 5 watts to 10. Well, it's 3 dB. We doubled it. What is the approximate change measured in decibels of a power decrease 
from 12 watts to 3. Oh, no. We cut from 12 to 6 and 6 to 3. So we went down 3 and 3. You add those. That's the one place in this whole thing you add. What is, amount of change in, measured in decibels is a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts, 10 dB. I will tell you that when you look at transmitters and people say, well, this is a seven watt, not a five. Yeah, boy, it's really something impressive. But I will tell you the difference between five and seven is not really that much because it's not even three dB. And to really make a change, you've got to play with at least three dB. If you're not making a three dB change, you're not likely to be doing it. I like to play with a power amp that takes my five watts up to about 40. That's five to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 40, that's nine dB, three, six, nine. Which of the following frequencies is equal to 28,400 kilohertz? Okay, if I'm going from kilohertz to megahertz, I'm going to a bigger unit, which means the number is going to be smaller. I'm going to be dividing by a thousand, so it should be 28.4. <clears throat> if the frequency display shows a reading of 2425 megahertz, what frequency is that in gigahertz? Well, there are a thousand megahertz in one gigahertz. So you divide by 1,000, and you're at 2.425. Does anyone know what that frequency is in the range of? Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's Yeah, but it's also UHF, because it's between 300 to 3,000. OK? HF is 3 to 30. VHF, 30 to 300. I keep hitting these because sooner or later we'll get them. Uh, yeah, I want to go with one more. What is the ability to store energy in an electric field called? How many of you have ever shuffled across a rug and touched somebody? And, okay. Well, electricity was stored in your body somehow. There is something called capacitance. It's a, it's a capacitor. There is nothing exotic about a capacitor. It is two metal plates, pieces of foil, whatever you want to call it, separated by an insulator. That's all it is. But you can put a charge on that and hold the charge. Okay. Uh, capacitors are fun. We used to charge them with 250 volts throw them at a guy and say, hey, catch this. He gets one jolt out of it, but OK. But it's called a capacitor. The basic unit of capacitance, this is a memory item. It is a farad. Named for, do you happen to know the guy's first name, Faraday? OK. I don't either. There was a guy by the name of Faraday. Michael Faraday, and he had absolutely nothing to do with capacitors. He was into generators, but they decided to name the capacitance unit after him. He was into, you know, okay. But it's a ferret. What is the ability to store energy in a magnetic field called? A magnetic field, other than a permanent magnet, is only exists in an electromagnet when there's current flowing. But there's energy stored there, and when you turn the current off, it pops out, and it can actually create some interesting situations. It is called inductance. And the basic unit of inductance is a Henry. And I have no clue what Henry did. And by the way, his last name, I'll bet, was Henry, not his first. Those are just two units that, you know, 
Oh, forgot this one. What is the unit of frequency? Hertz. This is one that changed since 1958. It used to be called cycles per second, which actually made sense. But, you know. What does the abbreviation RF refer to? It refers to radio frequency signals of all kinds. It doesn't matter whether it's the 100 kilohertz or the 10 gigahertz. And by the way, we do stuff up at that frequency. We've got a couple of local hams that do some stuff up at 10 gigahertz. You ought to go out with them sometime. It's, uh, let's just say that it's fun watching. A radio wave is made up of what type of energy? Electromagnetic. What is the formula used to calculate electrical power in a DC circuit? Now, do you remember what I said about plus and minus? You know, the 50-50 the, the, uh, life, lifeline? You got one here. Okay. If you take a look at your tri triangle, cover to P, what is it? E divided by, oh, I'm sorry, P is equal to E times I, sorry. I did the wrong one, okay. How much power is being used in a circuit when the applied voltage is 13.8 volts and the current is 10 amps? Okay, we want power. We cover the P, E times I. What is 13.8 times 10? Somebody help me out. 138. No kidding. Is that there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How much power is being used in a circuit when the applied voltage is 12 volts DC and the current is 2.5 amps? Same problem with two different numbers. 12 volts times 2.5 amps, 12 times 2 is 24, and add half of 12 is 6 is 30. That's how I do arithmetic, by the way. How many amps are flowing in a circuit when the applied voltage is 12 volts and the load is 120 watts? It's 12 volts, 120 watts. P divided by E is I. It should be 10. What is impedance? Remember I talked a little bit ago about resistance and impedance are the same thing. It's impeding or resisting the flow of current. The one applies to AC, which is impedance. The other applies to DC, which is resistance. It's a measure of the opposition of AC current flow in a circuit. If you can keep those two separate, what is the unit of impedance? Well, if the unit of resistance is ohms, the unit of impedance is ohms. I will just aside say that there are a couple of other factors that come into things with alternating current circuits. So the calculation on those is a little more complex than DC. What is the proper abbreviation for megahertz? Memorize this one. It is a capital M, a capital H, small z. And believe me, I write it wrong as often as right. How much time do I have? No, no, no I'm. Oh, well, she, on that, I don't know. She was keeping track of my time. 2334. 23 minutes. 30 oh, I got seconds. that much? Okay. We're not going to go that long. Somewhere between now and 3.30 we're going to quit. I'm just looking for a good stop point. What formula is used to calculate the current in a circuit? Okay, we're looking for current, which is I. <coughs> we know we have E and R, so it's the it's the E I R. Cover the, the I. It's E divided by R, right? What formula is used to calculate voltage in a circuit? 
Voltage is E. Cover the E, it's I times R. What formula is used to calculate resistance in a circuit? Cover the R, it's E divided by I. What is the resistance of a circuit in which the current of 3 amps flows through a resistor connected to 90 volts? We have 90 volts, we have 3 amps, we cover the R, it's E divided by I. 3 into 90 should be 30. What is the resistance in a circuit in which the applied voltage is 12 volts and the current is 1.5 amps? We have 12 volts, and we're looking for the resistance. Jeez, just my brain dead. Cover the R, E divided by I, should be 1 and a half into 12, which is a nice 8. What is the resistance of a circuit that draws 4 amps from a 12 volt source? 12 divided by 4 is 3. These are, these are pretty repetitious, but you want to think them through because unfortunately, there will be about two or three of these on every test. Okay? In, what is the current in a circuit with an applied voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 8 ohms? 12 divided by 80, I'm sorry, 80 ohms, is 1.5 amps. And what is the current through a 100 ohm resistor connected across 200 volts? 200 divided by 100 is 2. What is the current through a 24 ohm resistor connected across 240 volts? 10 amps. That's a big heater. Matter of fact, it's a 2400 watt heater, which is what's in many hot water heaters. What is the voltage across a 2 ohm resistor if a current of 0.5 amperes flows through it? 2 times 0.5 because it's I times R is 1. What is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if a current of 1 amp flows through it? 10 ohms, 1 amp is 10 volts. 10 times 1 is 10. What is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if a current of 2 amps flows through it? 20 volts. As we raise the voltage, the amount of current through the same resistor is going to go up. What happens to the current at the junction of two components in series? Think about this. We've got that beautiful series circuit that I was talking about. Make a note that I need to add the pictures of series and parallel circuits. Okay? I, I need pictures. I have slides for you if you want to. Okay. I can email them to you. Yeah, good. But at each point where two components hook together, the current's unchanged because it has to go through them. Think about my old fire hose thing. The, the flow where the two hoses connect together is the same. I like that analogy. That means pretty well. What happens to the current at the junction of two components in parallel? Now we've got the battery with two paths, and here's the junction. The current's divided. What came into here might be six, oh, six amps. It could be four and two or any other combination. And I don't know why those bird tracks are on. What is the voltage across each of two components in series with a voltage source? It is determined by the type and value of components. This is saying I've got a series circuit and I've got these components. What's the voltage across each one? It depends on the components. And actually, if you are astute with Ohm's law, you can take the resistance of the ones and add them up, and then you can take and figure out what the current is through it, and then you can figure the voltage out on each one. It's a, it's a couple step process, but 
uh, EEs have to do it. So series, then in a series one, every time it passes, you get dropped and folded. Yes. Yeah. Okay, one of the things, you do know what EE stands for. It's an egotistical engineer. <laughs> I know a bunch of them. Okay. And of course a CE is a non-existent thing because it's a civil engineer and I've never seen what it was. What is the, I worked with a group of engineers for quite a few years. I referred to the IEs as imaginary engineers. Oh yeah. What is the voltage across each of two components in parallel with a voltage source? It's the same voltage as the source. You hook two lights to a battery, they're both seeing the same. Okay, call it off for today. Start with 6A tomorrow morning. Somebody <coughs> keep track of that for me so that I don't go back to start at the beginning. <laughs>